Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Make sure you tune in to the Knights of Horror for their world premiere of May's Treatments, June the 3rd, 2020. In fact, go and subscribe. Do it now. Are you doing it? I don't see it. Wait, I can't see you. I'll just assume that you're doing it. June 3rd, 2020. All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a, another speculation for a different haunt, as you can see in the title. Today, we are speculating Horror Made Here 2020. Now, we're going off dun, dun, dun. little to no information about the event. Uh, they haven't announced anything about the event. The only thing that's been announced from the event, which was from last year, was that they'd be returning in 2020. Um, but with, with the big uh, COVID-19 going around, we don't know what haunt season is looking like, but we're, we're keeping... We're keeping our hopes up. That's why we're doing speculation videos to, to try to get everybody else's hopes up and, and stuff. It's actually looking good right now for uh, Universal Studios, being that they're going to be opening their City Walk in Hollywood. Uh, they're aiming for, I think, mid-June or July. I don't remember. I think it was mid-June, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's mid-June. Mid-June. So they're well, aiming I mean, for, for mid-June. So that's actually looking good for, of course, the theme park because we know Orlando did the same thing where they opened theirs uh, about mid-May. And now they're opening their theme park June fifth, so um, it's yeah. looking good. It's looking good. So it's look, it's looking like Florida may have a haunt season, more like more than yeah. likely. Um, and Definitely. we're on pace to pretty much have a haunt season. We're on like a forty nine fifty one percent kind of forty nine fifty one chance right now. <laughs> for some reason Hollywood backs down. I'm flying to Florida for Halloween. I don't know about you guys. I think I think we all are. We're already we're already planning the trip, man. So you yeah. might just have to come the same weekend we go. <laughs> Yeah, we got plans in the way. We're going to do a whole meetup, man. Squad meetup. Um, but let's talk about Horror Made here, man. I mean, I went in 2018. Very great event. Um, Batman, Conjuring, It, Exorcist, Freddy vs. Jason. Um, and I don't think, I think that, I think that's everything that was there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was only five attractions, five attractions. Of course they had a, uh, a bar based around theming based around true blood, which was a, a Warner brothers produced show that was showed on showtime. Um, they had a lot HBO. of HBO. It was HBO. Wasn't it? HBO, whatever. True blood. I'm thinking of another, there's another show that was on showtime. That was a vampire show. There's a billion shows on everything, bro. <laughs> yeah. It was on HBO, whatever. <laughs> Mr. Freaking has to be right all the time over here. We just don't want to upset the comment section because you know the they'll they'll say you say one thing wrong, everything else we say is wrong from here on yeah. out. Anyway, uh, they had a gift shop based around a little shop of horrors, which I thought was really good theming. They had a, a video game arcade based around like the Lost Boys, which was cool theming. Um, so it was a really cool like overall theme to a lot of iconic horror films, um, which I thought was cool. So. Um, the big question right now is, of course, if the event is going to happen at all because of, of, of what's going on in the world. Um, you know, with the cancellation of Midsummer Scream this year, where usually a lot of these haunts come and, and announce stuff and, and get you kind of ready before they make all their official announcements, uh, they, they give you, like, the, of course, the, the teaser of what's to come. Um, when Horror Made Here did happen in 2018, that's how I found out about it was through Midsummer Scream. Uh, and I found out about their event, and I was like, we're going to have to go, and we ended up buying tickets. And it was really good. So we don't know if it's happening yet, which brings me to, of course, when we will get announcements from this event. Now, there's no word or or, or any official word at all um, if the event's happening, nor if we're going to begin announcements pretty soon. So uh, Warner Brothers, of course, like every other place, they do a, they do offer a studio tour throughout uh, year round, and of course, that's been closed for some time now. Just like most theme parks have been closed, so we don't know when they're going to be reopening their doors to the public and to start production on uh, shows. And movies again. So um, until that happens, uh, Horror Made Here, I, I would assume, is also on hold until further notice, until they get the okay to really do that. I just knocked my freaking keyboard everywhere. That was cool. Um, but being that we want a Horror Made Here to happen this year, um, I think each of us have a, a little bit of our own speculations as to what we would like to see come to the event. So we're going to kick this speculation off uh, with Sammy. So go ahead, Sammy. Lead us off with some speculations that you would love to see. Definitely. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to go with I'll, – I'll do it like one or two. That way I don't take them all right off the bat. Okay. Um, but before we get to that, I, I think if we are going to get an announcement, it's going to come mid-July, mid to late July. Um, because if 
LA County opens on pace for that July 4th timeline that, you know, is currently being set. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we'll see announcements probably two to three weeks after that just to make sure that everything looks good. Yeah. Um, because, you know, typically it takes, you know, people are contagious for 14 days, supposedly. So if they open up on the 4th and they see within those two weeks, they don't see a huge spike, then I'm imagining a lot of haunts are going to start announcing relatively quickly after that. Yeah. Because they're going to be like, we're not seeing that huge spike. People are being responsible. Um, and so there's probably less concern for them making this announcement and then having to retract that announcement relatively yeah. quickly after that. Um, but I think my first one I'm going to go with is if you go on the Horror Made Here website, um, they, they, they say that they don't have a, a, a timeline on when they're going to announce them, well, if it's going to happen or not happen. But the one thing they do say is uh, in September, uh, a certain film is going to be offering its third uh, movie, and that's The Conjuring 3. Yes. Uh, the Devil Made Me Do It. So I'm imagining that they're going to bring back The Conjuring universe. And selfishly, I do want this. I saw the 2018 walkthrough and was astonished by what they offered. I mean, I feel like there's more things they can interact with, yeah. as well as provide the opportunity uh, to preview uh, maybe a scene or two from the new film. Yeah, um, to really promote that. So I, very, I imagine it pretty much on a marketing like, platform. It's a very good idea. Yeah, on a marketing uh, basis, it's cool because people will get hyped because it's the Conjuring and getting to go through anything of the Warrens is pretty terrifying enough. Um, but if you can say, "Hey, come to our event, and we're going to offer a special sneak preview of The Devil Made You Do It," whether that be the same way they did it with The Exorcist, um, it goes like a little filming, a little screening of it. Yeah. Or if it's just like maybe a room or two at the end of what they had previously done. Definitely. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Go ahead, Logan. Go ahead and give some thoughts on that one. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Conjuring was one of the ones on my speculation list. Um, just from seeing that they had that really cool interactive, uh, I don't know if you call it a maze. So they had, uh, this is actually any that I've never been to, but I've just seen a lot of video on it. Um, but yeah, you're right. The, uh, the, the new movie coming out this year. Um, <laughs> And if it's slotted in September, um, I don't see why they wouldn't put, a, put out a maze for it. Um, because usually, like, from what I've noticed, if, if a horror movie comes out in October, they usually don't do, don't really do mazes for them, like, in because um, they, don't, they don't want to spoil anything in the movie. But being that it's going to September, it's a good chance to get some kind of interactive experience with that. Uh, but other than that, um, I, I, I mean, I, I would love for it to open this year. Because I wanted to do last year, uh, but uh, they, they took a break last year. Hopefully, this is going to be a break for me. Um, I don't know, Anthony. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? So, I uh, I really liked what they did with The Conjuring the one, uh, when I first went to Hormate here. Um, it was a very uh, amazing interactive experience. I mean, they really brought... Like all, you know, the two films that they had, of course, with a little bit of Annabelle, which was really cool. So they brought all those movies to life. And, of course, some of was uh, The Nun as well, which actually was pretty much just Conjuring too. Um, but it was a really cool experience when you were waiting in line. You were waiting in line, of course, like uh, much like the first film where you have, of course, the, um, the white sheets hanging up in line and... Uh, you know, all that stuff uh, just to kind of give you that feel that you're entering this this world of The Conjuring. What was also really cool is if you looked up in the in the house, you actually every now and then in the window saw the nun walk by, which I thought was a really freaky and cool experience. And then, of course, you walk in. Uh, the nun kind of messes with you. you. You walk into this kind of first room where there's like a bunch of sheeted like mannequins everywhere. You don't know if it's real or not. Thankfully, none of them are real because I would have freaked out. But um then you walk in, of course, to the next room, and you see the nun up under the stairs. She comes out and in and out, in and out. So that that's terrifying as it is. And I know me and Sammy ha- have a very uncomfortable feeling about the nun. So I mean, that 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 kind of really, you know, is one thing. But um, of course, then you go into the Warrens collection, and from there, stuff happens. You move out to the next room, and then you see Annabelle, and they just pretty much take you throughout the entire first film and some of the second film. Um, which was really cool. I think what was the most memorable moment, of course, is when they did the painting scene from Conjuring 2 of the nun, and she popped out of the wall and everything. Like They really like, really did a good job on that. And they even had the old man from Conjuring 2 sitting in the chair like he did in the movie, which was, was really freaky. Um, he didn't move when you walked in, but he was just sitting there, which was just terrifying. So if they can do 
something based around that. Not to mention, from the time that maze came out till now, we've gotten even. I think we've gotten a, like a movie or two that that has tied into the Conjuring universe, or, or you know, continue to go. Annabelle Comes Home was one of them. Uh, the Curse of La Llorona was one of them. Um, and of course, with the upcoming Conjuring Three, uh, that would be a, a very good kind of solid maze if they based it around more of the Conjuring universe on those three properties. Um, maybe some nun stuff. We we didn't really get to see like a lot of like the nun movie stuff, so that'd be cool to see some nun movie stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, it would be really cool. I would love to see Conjuring Three come, and even if they did like a forbidden screen, like what they did with The Exorcist, um, there's not really there's not a lot. Of, I don't think there's any footage of that on YouTube, but. That is something that, if you experienced in person, was just terrifying. You had, of course, uh, the scariest scenes of the exorcist shown inside the theater, and you had a priest, and you had like nuns, and you know they were all walking around. You sat in like church pews, which actually gave it a really cool feeling. Uh, they were walking around, kind of like eyeballing you and stuff. And every time something like really demonic would happen in the movie, something weird would happen in the church. Like the eyes of statues would glow orange, or um, Reagan herself would just pop out of nowhere. You see it's subliminal uh, like flashes of like Pazuzu and all that and like the walls and stuff, which was really cool. So if they did something similar like that to the conjuring, I'd be all for that as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good idea. I can if they bring back conjuring, I'm all for it. Um, all right, I'm gonna well, I guess we'll just go one by one then. Uh, go ahead, Logan. what What do you got for speculation? Well, uh, I, again, I, this was an event that um, I have been to. So I think it's only been around for three. They've only done it three times, right? Two or three times that they've ran this event? Like, yeah, two or three times. The first two were very small, and, this, and then 2018 was, like, their biggest one yet. Right. So I, I don't imagine I – mean, I mean, I would love for them to bring in new things. I don't imagine for a ton of changes for them to do it again this year. Um, like, I, when I say that, um, one of my speculations is, is it, of course, um, because it's such a big property and everybody, the Pennywise is like everybody's thing right now. Um, I, I, I don't know how you felt about Chapter 2. It wasn't my favorite movie, but I definitely think if they did an It Chapter 2 interactive experience, I think a lot of people would really dig that. Yeah. Um, personally, I, personally, I would love an experience for the, for the 1990 TV miniseries It with Tim Curry. Um, I'm I'm biased towards that one because I grew up with it, but I know I'll never get it. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think an It Chapter Two uh, experience would be really cool uh, with like the big kind of like when he turns into that big giant spider at the end. Yeah, uh, I don't know, like really going through like caves um, that are underneath like the sewer where he lives. I don't know, it might be cool. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that one? I um would love to see a Chapter Two. I mean, since the first year that. Cormate here was here. We only got chapter one, so there's a lot of scenes I would love to see. Chapter two, of course, them being at the restaurant, good yeah. scene. Um, just returning and seeing the adult versions this time of the kids rather than the uh, the kids, and also it'd be kind of cool to see back and forth between both the adults and the kids. But there's a lot of cool scenes I would love to see. You know, it would be cool is if the facade was the fun house. Yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah, that'd be an interesting scene. I mean, just walking through a, a kind of mirror room like that. And seeing the kid get killed, um, that'd be freaking amazing if they could pull off that effect. What do you think, Sam? I, I agree. I, I think it would be really fun. Um, I think it would be even, you know, go through the sewers, going through little caves, going back to the house, um, and even kind of reliving um, each of the kids' like nightmares. Yeah. Um, would be really fun. Uh, yeah. Like, especially that one scene with the, the naked old lady running at you. <laughs> Terrifying. Definitely. No, I agree. I agree. Um, all right. The first one I want, the first one I got on my list, I got I got quite a lengthy list. So Conjuring is off. It's off. Um, only Conjuring was on my list. Um, but I would love to see a maze based around the TV show Supernatural, uh, especially because, you know, it got postponed the, the last uh, season the last half of the season, that is, got postponed until fall of uh, 2020 due to the whole uh, pandemic. And so I would love to see them do something around Supernatural. Now, Supernatural has a lot of interesting um, creatures, demons. Uh, you know, they, they've had werewolves, uh, vampires, uh, ghosts. Uh, you name it, they've had it. And to see the Winchester brothers and just have their classic car sitting out front and the maze would be freaking awesome. I mean, I love that car to death. That is like my dream car to own. Um, and to see that car just sitting out the front before, uh, maybe you're, the story is with this one, you're going with the Winchesters on a, on a case 
and you see a lot of the infamous monsters uh, from the show pop out, which I think would be really cool. Um, and I think horror wise, it can it can work because there are some episodes that are pretty damn scary, man. So um, if they can pull this one off, I would love to see Supernatural come. And I'm like a huge fan of the show, so I, I would love to see it. I, I yeah. think it has a, a go for Logan. Oh, go ahead, Sammy. For sure. Uh, I think it has a really big following. Um, and I think that's what made Warner Brothers very special, uh, especially in 2018, was that they brought tons of fan favorites to the event. Yeah. And I think Supernatural has proven to be something people really enjoy and love. Because, I mean, what is it on, like, 20-something seasons or something like that? Ridiculous. Oh, no, 15. <laughs> uh, so it's still ridiculous at 15. Yeah. Um, the 15th uh, and final season. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Winchester's car is iconic. Um, and I, I think at one point, doesn't like everything they've already fought previously come back and try to like get back at them because they resent God or something? Or You just spoiled uh, season 14. But yeah. But even then, you know what I mean? Like, So if everything they have to fight everything that they previously fought and you have to go alongside them, I think that offers, offers the opportunity to bring back all of those creatures that you mentioned. All right, Sammy spoiling season 14 for y'all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so make sure, uh, make sure Anthony, that you put spoilers for season 14 ahead yeah. of Supernatural. Yeah. Right I'm going to have to <laughs> when we start talking about Supernatural around the 15-minute mark. I'm kind of pissed because I actually haven't watched Supernatural, Sammy, so uh, thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 Don't I do it. It's a waste of time. Just kidding. <laughs> I actually haven't. I haven't watched Supernatural. Um, I know. Like, I think my girlfriend watches it. Um, I know a lot of people who watch it. It's one of those properties that's a fan favorite. I'm all for giving the fans what they want, and I, I know it, it would. It would um, I know it would please a lot of people to, to see that show get some love because um, I. It's not a universal property, but I've seen plenty of people want a Supernatural as universal, which doesn't make sense. But um, but at, at Horror Made Here, it would make a ton of sense. Yeah. So um, I. And uh, I, I think I watched part of the first season like years ago. Um, and I, I remember the car out of all things um, in the first season. And some of the monsters I remember. But no, I mean, just from my distant memory of the first season. Uh, and I, like you said, there's 15 seasons. So there's so much content that they can work with. I think it would work great. Definitely. Definitely. Sammy, go for round two of speculations. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of fan favorites... Um, this is another one I think that a lot of people have wanted to see at HHN, but hasn't been done. Um, is uh, 13 Ghosts, uh, the, the remake that came out, in, I believe, in 2001. Um, I think that movie offers a really iconic, immersive experience because you can be like going through a tour of the property, similar to the way they did The Conjuring, um, and you can just watch all of the mishaps happen that happened in, all of, in the film. Yeah, um, and that film it just had a, a re-release this, earlier this year um, on Blu-ray with like new bonus features and new cover art, right? Um, so I think it's back to be relevant, um, and so that it's an opportunity, and it's got a huge cult following, um, and I think that would make a lot of people happy to see that come to the event. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, Thirteen Ghost is. Uh... Definitely a uh, movie I remember watching. Um, my dad, you know, my dad would watch it and stuff. And I think what really makes that movie is just the makeup done with all the the ghosts. You know, I mean, they just look iconic and and different in their own ways, which I thought was really cool. So, if and in Warner Brothers, at, you know, at Horror Made Here in 2018, proved that they can bring all that makeup to life. I mean, if you looked at you know the Conjuring characters, if you looked at you know Reagan from The Exorcist, if you even looked at the damn Joker. Like, they've proved that they can bring that makeup to life. So, yeah, I would love to see uh, 13 Ghost happen. I uh, really want to see that, see what happens with that. Yeah, um, that, um, that, that uh, when it comes to interactive mazes, I think that one really has a lot of chances to be interactive. <laughs> I've seen that. It's funny you say that. Like, I, I was about to pop it on. Uh, I was about to pop it on last night. Um, I've I've got the original too. I don't know if you ever saw the original. Uh, the original's uh, pretty damn good, but the the remake is I think is so much better. And it's the rare case to say a remake is better than the original. Yeah. But Thirteen Ghosts really proves to to be that case. 
Um, I would like to give it a good rewatch so I can get more ideas on like, you know, like what I could picture in certain rooms. But I think that's a that's a good it's a good spe it's a good idea. I just hope that they would consider it be, being that it's a cult following. I, I hope that Warner Brothers would consider that property to be relevant today. Yeah, uh, I would love it. Uh, I just hope like people there aren't going, what the hell is 13 ghosts? And I'd have to slap them all and go watch that movie. Yeah. Definitely. Logan, round two pick. All right. So this one uh, is probably my favorite uh, speculation IP that I have. Um, and I don't think it's too far-fetched. I think it could happen, but under certain circumstances. Um, part of this has to do with Universal um, and their haunt event this year, if it happens. Um, Beetlejuice is speculated, of course, uh, for HHN. Um, you know, it's speculated. It's never been confirmed. So with that being said... I would love to see Beetlejuice come to Horror Made here, um, being that it's a Warner Brothers property. But uh, when I say Beetlejuice, I don't know as much as I would love for it to be uh, its own maze. What What do you guys think about like a Tim Burton maze, like all together, like a bunch of Tim Burton properties, including Beetlejuice, all in one kind of interactive experience? You know, like there. I mean, there are some of his movies obviously aren't so, as scary as the other ones, um, but I think it would just be a overall fun kind of like nostalgic interactive maze yeah. i don't know what do you guys think about that you had me at tim burton because you know it's part of that film slate is batman and batman returns oh that would actually be a great idea i didn't even think of batman uh, batman returns being in that yeah that's a great idea. that's so, tim burton dude, have, man have the danny devito penguin in there and dude now i'm even more <laughs> that, I, I think tim burton would be a lot of fun i think uh, like uh, he's another person I th like I said, Warner Brothers didn't pick on making people happy, and people love Tim Burton. Absolutely. Like, he has a, a huge following. Like, no matter what he does, he will have people watching it. Um, and so I think that's a, a good way to, you know, bump those ticket sales. Especially if what's true is they didn't make a good enough a profit in 2018. Yeah. Um, and so if that's the case, bring a bunch of fan favorites, things you own, don't have to lease IPs, um, so you don't have to worry about those payments. And you'll 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 get those gates flooded. Definitely, definitely. No, I agree. Um, all right. Now this is one that I I think would be perfect around for this year, um, uh, especially with the sequel that that came out last year, which was freaking amazing. Um, and it just hit its fortieth anniversary. The Shining recently. Doctor Sleep. The it Shining is. and Doctor Sleep. That was my I next stole, one. Dude. That was my <laughs> next one. I beat you to it. <laughs> and I was just debating about that right now. I was like, should I do that one next, or should I do a video game? <laughs> and I went with that one. Because I was like, if I don't do that one, these guys are going to have it. So, uh, yeah, Shining and Dr. Sleep, man. Shining just hit 40 years, man. That is a, a, a freaking milestone for that yeah. film. I mean, and that movie is just a phenomenal film. Uh, I don't think, for me at least, there's not one problem with that film. That film, I mean, when you look at a director like Stanley Kubrick, who really is a perfectionist when it comes down to filmmaking, and his movies actually prove that time and time again, um, The Shining is no, you know, it, it, it is just one of those movies that is just phenomenal. Not to mention with Dr. Sleep um, that came out, which was surprisingly really good. Um, and I had a lot of faith for this movie going in because, of course, who they casted as Danny. I'm a huge Ewan McGregor fan, so when I saw he was going to be played Danny, I was just all for it. Um, and to kind of get a sequel of The Shining, like, you know, so many years later, um, after the events, you know, that he, he went through at the Overlook Hotel was a perfect um, perfect way, uh, way to really do it. I'm glad they kind of did it now because it makes a lot more sense now than it did if they were to try to do it, you know, earlier. And not to mention, I think Stephen King wrote the book in like tw 2013 or 2014. So it's like, you know, it, it, is a, it, is, it is a perfect time to be doing that kind of movie. So I would love to see, uh, you know, maybe the first half of the maze we visit the Overlook Hotel and get some of the most iconic scenes of The Shining. And then the last half of the maze, we we, uh, we go down to a more run-down Overlook Hotel where we follow Danny Torrance at this point, um, and we see more of the iconic uh, scenes of that film, or even the iconic year. earlier in the movie when we see, of course, like the... I think they're supposed to be like vampire type characters, but they, they the way they do stuff in that book is a lot different. They like they only eat you know the 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 powers of the people who shine and stuff like that, which really ke keeps them immortal and all that. So I mean that'd be really cool to see all of that come to life. Um, and of course, I mean who can forget the similarities that they did 
in the in the Doctor Sleep movie when you know you see similarities between him and his dad with of course the axe scene and him drinking the the whiskey at the bar you know and then him looking through the the door which was really cool so I mean I would I would just love to see this property at the event overall I mean I know Horror Nights already did it so I would love to see what Warner Brothers can do with theirs including Doctor Sleep you know what I mean absolutely um, yeah uh, just like you said uh, HHN did a Shining Maze but. I think if Warner Brothers focus just kind of solely on Dr. Sleep, I mean, obviously, like, you have the hotel um, that was, of course, in The Shining, but it would be really cool to, to kind of do, like, how they, did in the, how they did in the film, where you kind of, they kind of make that the climax of the movie is bringing you to the, back to the hotel. So, like, if they save the hotel for the last thing you go through, yeah, I don't know. Be cool. Sammy, what do you think? I, I was thinking another approach to it is, Instead of this like whole base thing in terms of doing the shining doctor sleep, kind of just make it focus on the overlook, okay. um, and kind of like you're taking like a like ghost adventure style tour through the overlook hotel, trying yeah. to interact with the ghosts. Which uh, um, it's funny that you bring that up fun? because they are going to be making an overlook spinoff show on HBO Max, and if they and if they cut a promo or if they cut more advertisement leading up to the event. It'd be also a good way to uh, promote that for the next year. You know what I mean? Like, this is coming soon, and, uh, you know, these are already out. I mean, and you can already see the merchandise at the freaking store. They'll probably sell the 40th anniversary of uh, The Shining on Blu-ray, and then, of course, Dr. Sleep on Blu-ray. Like, oh, after the maze, go buy the movies. You can go watch them at home. You know what I mean? You know, watch the movies, experience the, uh, experience the, the maze. You know what I mean? It's one of those kind of marketing things they can do. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It offers another marketing opportunity, another way to get – cash in those pockets yeah of uh of the event uh, especially if they come out with like a limited edition like cover just for horror made here for the 40th anniversary yeah. of the shiny yeah Nine. yeah even if they sell the other the one that was the cover for when for we the 4k those, release yeah for the 4k release like yeah. that was sick yeah. uh and i think it'd be really cool to just go through the hotel kind of get stuck in the maze and um having jack torrents come out at you at different parts would yep. be kind of fun and uh I haven't seen Doctor Sleep, so I can't speculate on what that could bring uh, outside maybe. of like the pre. Did you not I, see it with me? No, I think you went with someone else. Uh, I don't know who you went with. I know. I know. I don't, I yeah, don't it's know. probably bad. I don't remember who I went with. I don't know who you went with, but I know that it's on Voodoo, and I just need to find the two hours to watch it. Um, dude, you've been watching a lot of movies on Voodoo lately. I'm pretty sure you can find those two hours. Yeah, I had time to watch wow. movies the other day, so I watched. Maybe one day watch one half of the movie, the other day you watch the last half. Yeah, it's just really trying to find the time to focus to watch it. I have a lot of time, but if I, I want to give it the, the love it deserves. Because um, I, you know, I can just turn a movie on and then do other things while watching it, or I can say, hey, I'm giving you the next two and a half hours of my full attention while I'm putting my phone down, and I'm doing nothing but looking at that screen. And I think All that's right. what it deserves. All right. I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. All right, Sammy, you got any more speculations? I do. Um, this is something I want to come back selfishly um, because I got to see the walkthroughs of it in 2018. Was the Freddy versus Jason? Yeah, um, yeah. That thing was Camp Crystal Lake was beautiful. Yep, beautiful. And I just want to be able to be walking through, and Freddy's coming out of the bushes to mess with you. Jason's coming out the water which is, like, astonishing that he was able to do that. Um, and then just going, like, seeing all the counselors and really just being terrified. Um, it would be even really cool if they kind of did it, you know, give it, like, a lights-out treatment that they did at, like, Knott's. Yeah. We were kind of going through it with, like, a flashlight only. It would be really cool, yeah. That would be terrifying. But I don't think that could happen, obviously, because that's a prop that they're going to have to clean um, but between every time. Yeah. So that adds another logistical issue. Plus, getting you out out there like they had to previously when they're putting you on the little carts and stuff. But if they did do it, best believe I will wait two hours to go through that because that thing looks. Amazing. I didn't even wait two hours to go through. I only waited like twenty minutes. None of, no, I'll I'm, tell you this: horror made here lines were beautiful, dude. We didn't wait anything longer than forty five minutes. But I'm saying I, I would wait two hours for that, like, yeah. and not complain because that's how cool the walkthrough looked. I think that's what makes Horror, Horror Made Here a unique event, too, is they do very limited ticketing, so that's why you can have time to do everything. So, uh, Logan, what are your thoughts on Freddy FVJ? Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a lot um, 
I'm about to add to that actually. Um, both of you stole like two of my speculations. Thank you very much. But it's all good. It's all good. Um, Sammy, uh, that's a great idea uh, because that was one of the like that was one of the things that made me really beat myself up for not going in um, 2018. So I was really looking forward to 2019. Um, of course, we've already talked. You know, they uh, they they didn't do it last year. So it would be great if they could bring that back this year. Except, you know, it'd be really cool as if um, I don't know if you guys have seen. Uh, there's I don't remember where it's at. I think it's in like Arizona, where they have an interactive Friday the Thirteenth game experience. Because I don't know if, if you ever played the Friday. The, if, I don't know if you if you ever played the game on PS4 and Xbox, and um, where you have to try to survive against against Jason. Yeah. Well, I think somewhere. Arizona, they they have like an actual like like they have an actual real life game. Uh, look it up if you haven't seen it. But like you, you you're you're playing as a as a camp counselor, just like the game, just just like the PS4 game. Um, and uh, there's rules, and you have to try to s survive like an hour inside of a giant like cabin with Jason. And you gotta like find a walkie talkie to call the police. You gotta find parts of the car. Um, so it'd be really cool if they could do something like that at Warner Brothers, where they give you like a camp counselor T-shirt to really kind of put you in that experience outside of Crystal Lake. Like you're like they're just opening up uh, Camp Crystal Lake again. Uh, Jason's long gone. Blah 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 blah. It's been years since that happened. Uh, let's uh, we're we're uh, setting up the this big cabin for tomorrow's camp kids to come kind of put you in this kind of story and then as you're like i don't know getting things ready jason shows up so uh you're told uh okay there's a walkie talkie around here somewhere uh because our, our phones aren't working way out here at, at, at the camp or whatever so you gotta find this walkie talkie that's gonna call the cops or whatever and um and then there's multiple jasons i don't know if you i don't know if you saw the video but in the arizona video uh, there's multiple jasons because in the video game he like he he can like he can pretty much like uh what's the word he can like not 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 fly but he can like kind of like get teleport thank you duh brain fart um he can teleport pretty quickly so what they do is they only have one jason out at a, at a time but uh while one jason is out um there the others are, are are like in like kind of very special hiding places so when uh, when 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 you want to teleport to an, another location, that Jason goes away, and the other Jason comes out on the other side of the house. Uh, but anyways, it'd be kind of really cool to implement that, and you have to find like, like there's like Nerf guns that you can use to like to like shoot Jason, and if you hit Jason, then he goes down for like ten seconds. It would be really cool. I honestly, if they did that, it would probably be the hit experience of the entire event. My you had you had me at Nerf guns. Like, <laughs> I could care less about what I'm doing. I, if I got a Nerf gun, it's done. It's Nerf or nothing, man. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think I think you have a great idea, Logan, to really enhance well, it and make it spicy. It, it's not my idea. Um, so this is definitely not my idea. It's my idea for it to come to Warner Brothers. But there is a, a there is a group of people that do fun. Um, I, I feel bad because I don't remember the name of the group, but search it on YouTube. It's there. It's so cool. Awesome. Yeah, I de I'm definitely familiar with it. I haven't seen the videos because I didn't okay. know there was videos of it. Yeah. But I know, like, last year, because my sister lives in Arizona, and I'm obviously in Arizona right now, she had told me, hey, would you do this with me? And I was like, I don't know if I would. That seems pretty crazy. Now, would you do it if I went? <sighs> He's like, definitely, no. It's, work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty much work at that point. It's mandatory. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Then we're all gonna have to wear GoPros and do it, though. What about like me and Logan both went? And at that point, you're kind of like, I don't have a choice. <laughs> I, yeah, I would, I would, I would do it. I just well, don't it's not, know. It's man. not like be... they can touch you, dude. No, I know that. I know that they're not gonna touch you. I, I think Arizona's <laughs> like opening pretty much right now. So like, if if our stuff's closed here in October, I'm saying mm. like we're gonna go to Arizona this October to do that. We're gonna go to Florida for HHN. Like we're gonna do Halloween. Man. <laughs> no, there's a, a, there's two there's two events here too in Arizona. The 13th floor has two haunts here. Yeah, but um, they, they they touch, don't they? No, no, 13th floor doesn't touch. Oh, You're thinking of seven, 17th, 17th door. Seventh yeah. door. I, I I won't go there. That's where I draw my limits. Like I don't like people touching me. Like oh. when it comes down to that kind of stuff. Like, if Jason has to touch me to tag me out or something, like, That's I get different. that. That's different. Yeah. yeah. I but, like, I can't have to, like, oh, it's like, can I get a picture? <laughs> yeah. I think he does have to touch you to tag you out. I, I, 
watch the video. I don't remember correctly, but um, yeah, I mean, they're, he's not picking you up, freaking. He's not picking you up by the neck and like getting you to the wall with his knife. <laughs> I would love to see him try to lift me up because that's gonna be a journey. <laughs> that goes for both of us, good sir. I know. Put me in you a can... fucking sleep. Put me in a sleeping bag and knock me against the tree. I dare you. The real Jason, maybe. Not the yeah. fake Jason, though. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of work. They're gonna have to hire some strong men. Um, unlike you guys, I did get to experience um that uh, Freddy vs. Jason walkthrough, and it was really phenomenal. I didn't get to experience the Jason coming out of the water. However, I did get an equally creepy one where uh, the counselor came up to us, and Jason was just staring off into the water, which is also equally creepy, and it's an an iconic thing that has been seen in one of the movies. Um. So that was cool, and then when he noticed the counselor, he turned around and started walking towards us, and then Freddy came out of nowhere, and then it was cool to see, like, you didn't know who was counselor and who was, you know, who Freddy was playing, so it was kind of like you were in this nightmare um, of who was a counselor, and then every now and then, like, Freddy would be one of the counselors dressed up in, like, a jock suit or dressed up in, like, counselor clothes, which would be really cool, and then you got to go through these, uh, the counselor bungalows, and Freddy and Jason were fighting each other, and you're caught in the middle of that, which was really cool, um, but it was, it was really, it was a really fun experience, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and yeah, I, I am kind of want to go on that selfish point. I would love to see a, uh, a new story or bring it in the back for an immersive experience because that is, that is, I think when I went on the Warner Bros. tour, they said that is one of the only like forest on set locations that they have, like with that kind of whole setting and stuff. So a lot of films actually film like there if they need it. So, um, yeah, that, that's really cool. Um, Logan, do you got any other speculations? Um, I, I don't know if I would call this a speculation. I, this is more of a personal want. I don't ever really see this happening. I would love it if it happened. Um, not really sure how they would do this, um, but it's a property that I love um, that nobody at Haunt Me Bench really talks about. Is uh, the 1980, I want to say 86, I think. I could be wrong. 1986 remake of The Fly. Uh, if you guys hey, have- that, was on the, that was on my speculation list, man. I'm glad that you brought that up. Right on. Well, now we're even, and yeah. you, you you stole Doctor Sleep from me, so I I got um, more. That's okay. All right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. Um, having dude, like having the Brundle fly, uh, uh, freaking like just having him transform throughout this experience. I I, don't, I really don't know how. I, I really don't know how they would do this because a lot of the movie takes place inside of his apartment. Yeah, and like him, like kind of living life and trans slowly transforming into this fly. But if they could do something to pull this off, it would be really creepy. Uh, Anthony, what do you have to add to that? Since you um, had it on. So, I mean, of course, we're talking about the Jeff Goldblum one, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, yeah, that movie is just sci-fi wise is great. I think at the time when the movie came out, the effects were just amazing on it to see that kind of character of the fly come to life. Um, and I think it'd be a really interesting take. Now. If you guys remember, also, I think about two or three years ago, 20th Century Fox actually put on a mini horror event for like a day. Um, and they invited so many people out. Um, and it was to kind of celebrate a couple of horror movies. They did, I think, Carrie. They did. Um, fuck, they, did they did The Fly. I know that. They did Carrie and The Fly. And I think they did two other like iconic horror films. Um, so look that up on YouTube. That was really cool because I know I remember TLEV went on that and they did a video on that. But uh, so they kind of did a, a, a the scene they did is they had one of the girls that was an actress in there and they would go into this elevator and the fly would actually come down on the elevator and pull the girl up, which I thought was really cool. So seeing that, you know, I was like, now I really want to fly maze. So yeah. You know, I, I think just seeing the fly in person would just be terrifying. I mean, with the yeah. big eyes and everything, and of course all that, it just would be terrifying. I mean, um, I, I I think makeup wise, it'd be really good unless they just get a bunch of like masks or something. But I would love to see how the costumes would look. Um, and like you said, yeah, majority of the movie does just take place in his apartment. Um, much like The Exorcist, though. I mean, we got to see it at sure. Horror Nights. The majority right. of that movie just took place in one room, and. For God knows how, they pulled that maze off as well. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of black wall transitions. But, I mean, I think if I think with certain mazes like that, it fits well because in between those transitions, you had people popping up. You had the, the subliminal imagery of Pazuzu on the walls. Um, 
and you know you had of course every room scene was different so that was cool but yeah i think the fly would be amazing that i really want to see that uh, at any event at this point but i think warner brothers horror made here would probably be the more likely chance i would get it all right Anthony. what do you got man all right am i uh well sammy do you got any thoughts on the fly or you just you've never seen it so you don't <laughs> I've never, I've never seen the fly. To okay. Be um, <laughs> you got any more speculations at that? I do. I have one more. Okay. What you got? One more I got is uh, Gremlins. Okay. Um, that was on my beautiful... speculation list too, but you didn't. You guys didn't take the two best ones that I that I still want to bring up. I Go for it. it. You still got you still got more, but uh, I think Gremlins. If Universal's not doing it, I think there was a lot of buzz around it when there was the announcement on the first speculation map. Of having gremlins, yeah. Um, so I think Universal can capitalize on that and seeing people are fans of this property. Maybe let's not sell ourselves short and let's do it ourselves. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, just be able to interact with those little creepy monsters. Not to mention, it was on the speculated lineup for HHN, then immediately taken off for the second one. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Warner the buzz Brothers, was there. Warner Bros. may be up to something at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know, man. I've never seen Gremlins. I gotta watch it. Oh, um, you guys are killing me. <laughs> I don't know, though, man. It just it just doesn't look like something I'd be into. You, you know what? It's definitely one of those movies that I grew up with as a kid. So it's like a it's like a king horror movie, in my opinion, which isn't like negative to say. Uh, it's just one of those that like, you probably would have liked it more if you watched it as a kid. Um, but I mean, the guy who directed it. Joe Dante did like the Howling. Um, oh God, he he. I don't know if you ever saw the movie The Burbs with Tom Hanks. He did that too. He's just he's got a big list of films that he's done, and all of them are really good. But Gremlins is a Christmas horror, so like I don't know if you're into Christmas horror. Um, there are certain Christmas horrors. Yeah, there are certain Christmas horrors that I really like, and some are just terrible. But I say Gremlins is probably my favorite Christmas horror movie. Um, but when it comes to like uh, a maze or some kind of interactive experience, I would love it if it's done right. Um, it, and that would really depend because the whole movie is just about tiny creatures. And uh, I, other than that, like I don't know what else would pop out and scare you. So that might get old after a while. It just depends on how it would be done. Like I'm sure a lot of like the scares would be people like running out and being like 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 mobbed with gremlins all over them. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, so that would probably be like one of the scare factors, but I don't. I honestly don't know. Um, I I don't know how that would play out, but it's a great property. It has a lot of potential, and it sounds like it's pretty realistic of Warner Brothers to do. So I'm really excited to see if and or when they decide to pull this off. I want to see how they're going to do it. Definitely. No. Yeah. Um, like I said, never seen the movie, so I don't have very much to say about it. All I know is there's fuzzy little creatures. They're little fuckers, and. Uh, <laughs> I think that'd be just terrifying in that. If they did it right, though, I mean, I don't know how they would do it if they would have people dressed up in costumes or if they would have, like, really good puppeteers or whatever. But we'll see what happens if they were to do it. Um, does, does everybody have any more speculations? Because I got some heavy hitters. Yeah. Um, I just want to oh, add, <laughs> add one thing real quick, Anthony. Just one really small thing before you take it away. Uh, Poltergeist is something that yep. HHN obviously did. But it could be cool if Warner Brothers did something like an interactive poltergeist thing, like you're trying to find Carol Ann. If you've ever seen that movie, uh, yeah. you know, uh, like I've only movie. seen the first one. I haven't seen the other ones. Uh, I have a guilty pleasure for two. Three is terrible. Uh, so don't waste your time. But two watch, is actually watch good. Curse Films. You'll understand why three was terrible. Okay. All right. Um, I I, well, uh, I was going to say poltergeist. Yeah, but because ETH just did it, but I was if they, like, if they I was did like, something, I don't know. If they did something different, where you're trying to find Carolyn, like, like, like you're like, you're like, you know, some of the people that are going in, into the house to try to help get her out of um, that like third dimension she's in or whatever. Um, yeah. But, um, and then just really quick to add, um, I've never been to to Horror Made here. Do they have anything for Scooby Doo? I mean, I, I know that's Fucking really... Fucking Scooby-Doo. I would love a Scooby-Doo maze, dude. Uh, but no, they didn't have anything for Scooby-Doo. Uh, well, I, I wasn't saying like a maze, but like, <laughs> honestly, that might be really cool. Um, but um, if they had like some kind of cool like photo op, like I, I know they have like kind of like a party vibe thing going on out there, right? Like they've got kind yeah. of like, it's like a 
kind of party. So yeah. they had like a pop with like with like the gang and like a mystery machine and, and a dog. It might be really cool. I'm dude, even say- a freaking interactive <laughs> experience with all their famous monsters, dude. That'd be I'd I've, be I've, I'd be all over that, dude. And people have been fans of Scooby Doo for so long that like everybody would be on board for that. If they could pull it off. I'm game, man. Yeah. Wait, how right. did I not think of that? I love Scooby Doo. Yeah, like, I love Scooby Doo. <laughs> like Zoinks. Like Zoinks, yo. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, how did I not think of that? I'm beating myself up on that one. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna get into some video games before I I announce my last two like movies that I would love to see. So video games, I would love to see another Batman one, especially based around Arkham Knight, um, or Arkham Origins, whatever one is. Uh, Arkham Origins is more just a dark, grimy uh, game of just you know Batman Year One, which was good. But I think like um, I think the first one took place around Arkham Asylum more than anything, which was really cool. Um, Arkham City would be a little bit harder to do um, as far as uh, you know you know what they can do, but I think they could still pull that off if you just take you know, some of the most famous parts of the game and just kind of put it into that maze would be really cool. But Batman overall would be cool, and I would love to actually see Batman this time, and we only got to hear him at the end. But seeing the iconic villains was awesome. Interacting with Joker was probably the the highlight of my life right there. I mean, <laughs> you know, just because they knew their stuff from comic books and stuff. Like, I was wearing a Robin thing, and Joker commented that he beat a Robin with a crowbar, dude. Like, uh... it's just- if you're a diehard Batman fan, you know that reference. It's like they knew their shit, dude, which was awesome. Um, and he even got to—I even got a picture with him of him holding the crowbar. One of my favorite pictures of all time. Makeup was fantastic. Harley Quinn, fantastic. Riddler, fantastic. Two Face, fantastic. You know, all these iconic villains. Scarecrow even looked fantastic. Poison Ivy, you know, Penguin. They were all in there. They were all awesome. Um, it was really cool. Really felt like you were in the game. Um, another one that I'm surprised we didn't really hear was Mortal Kombat. Now, a lot of people were like, well, how can a fighting game work? Well, if you really look at the Mortal Kombat universe, it's a really dark and, 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 like, weird universe. Like, I was just, I just started playing Mortal Kombat 10, and it's like, you know, from that story alone, is just, like, they have, like, people that are, a lot of the, like, um, famous, you know, characters were dead, and they brought them back and stuff, and, and they possessed them and stuff, which would, would look really cool. And just imagine, like, you're walking through the maze, and you see Scorpion come out of nowhere and just whip out his chain and go, get over here. Like, I'd be terrified. <laughs> I'd be terrified of that, dude. You know, Sub-Zero, you know, all these Baraka, all these, you know, freaking Raiden, all these guys coming out, and it'd just be terrifying. Um, of course, like I said, Dying Light earlier would be a really cool um, interactive maybe one. Not like when, So when I bring up like a parkour type thing, like uh, the way I looked at it, like look at the, um, the Walking Dead experience they did at Comic-Con. I think it was in 2013 or 2012 where they did at Petco Park. Something if they did something like that where like I had like a little like an experience like that where you just run around and try to avoid and evade zombies would be really cool, um, which I think would be very fun. And another one is a video game. Uh, that I've only played once, but it was actually pretty terrifying, which was called Fear. Um, and they think they did like three or four of these games, which was very terrifying. But I think Fear would be really uh, an interesting maze, especially because it's one of those psychological horror games that can really mess with your mind. So I feel like that would be like a, a really fun maze to go through, seeing a lot of the creatures that they use in that game and the psychological psychological horror they use in that game would be really cool. Um, one property, now we're going to move on to the properties. Those are the only video games that I had. Um, Sweeney Todd, Demon Barber. No one mentioned that one. Um, the Demon know. Barber of Fleet Street. Yeah. But uh, I mentioned uh, Tim Burton maze, and when I say that, I kind of pictured that in there, but okay. go on. <laughs> Tim Burton, part of maybe the Tim Burton experience, or maybe its own kind of uh, interactive experience. Now, this can work one of two ways. You can do a maze, but I think it'd be really cool if they had a photo op with Sweeney Todd where uh, there's a chair – you know, a barber's chair, and, and it's a guy that's dressed up as Sweeney Todd with his blade, and he, he could just act like he's going to give you a shave or kill you, you know what I mean? So that can work one of two ways. It's a uh, close shave. It's not killing you. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's a close shave, man. Um, but anyway, I think Sweeney Todd would be a great property, and it could also fit in the, uh, the, the Tim Burton one as well, just the whole fact of, you know, just a, a scene or two, and that would be really cool. And the last property, which I am very disappointed, especially in Logan on this one that he didn't mention, is the Lost Boys. Okay, but I didn't mention that because they had an arcade there, and I would love it. I would really love it, but you mentioned the arcade, so I go, well, if they have an arcade, they're, they're, they're probably not going to do anything else. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me talk a little bit about the, the – the only thing about the arcade is they could just have the title Lost Boys Arcade, and that was uh-huh. it. 
Okay. Uh, there was no really interactive. The only thing that was in there was a bunch of 80s retro games. Gotcha. So that was that. Guys, but I think I'm, I'm disappointed that I didn't speak up about it. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, I think Lost Boys would work amazing from what we've seen, uh, of course, at the art gallery that they had at uh, I Like Scary Movies, bringing a lot of those iconic scenes to life from there. Uh, their their hideout to of course the, the you know where they jump off the bridge and the in the train scene which was awesome um, and of course you know just my, one of my favorite lines that Dead Meat uses you're dead meat like that it's great I would love to see all that no so that's all that's uh, all I have absolutely man uh, Lost Boys uh, has a great potential to uh, be amazing they could even like implement like. They could even implement like like the Santa Cruz pier, like have a have a part in the maze where you're like on the pier and like maybe yeah. it could start that way because the beginning of the movie I think um, there's a lot of scenes on that pier. Um, but yeah, just like you said, like making making your way to that hideout. Like I would freaking love to see like a a life like like an interactive life size just uh lost boys hideout man it would be so freaking cool um but yeah i mean the only reason why i didn't state it was because i i figured they they they, they had the arcade um they uh, have they had the arcade for every time they've done the event have they had it since day one or is this i don't know thing? it was there it was there for 2018 i know that much well i'll be awesome man i'm all for that i'm all for that sammy have you seen lost boys no i have not seen lost boys <laughs> She should have it's already got it's on Voodoo. It is. Um, once again. Um but <laughs> here's my butt with that movie. I just I, I didn't really fall in love with it at the art gallery that we went to. It was kind of just there. Well, because you didn't uh, see the movie. You gotta see the movie. Then you probably would have liked it. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, we hope Homemade Here twenty twenty happens this year. Um, and those are literally an hour-long video of what we would love to see at the event this year, or any year, whenever it comes. Um, I think the last thing I want to talk about is uh, next week, May's Treatment Season 1 starts. Heck yeah. That's going to be fun. A lot of fun. Um, your three judges right here. Uh, we got some amazing properties on this piece of paper that you can't see. I know all the properties except uh, one person's property. Um, but hopefully we'll get that this week. But we have a lot of great properties going to be on Maze Treatments this next week. So it's definitely stay tuned because it's going to be a great competition between uh, a plethora of just great YouTubers. Um, we got people like TLAV Horror, all three of them, Hotline, Lost TV, SoCal Exploring, Edutainment. Uh... Zombie Chris, Connor Florida, and Jinx the Flu representing the Tormented Society. And we'll be your judges. I'm Anthony. I'm Logan. Boom. Um, I'm Jeff. I'm... <laughs> We're doing a promo here. Oh, my bad. You didn't tell me that. You didn't tell me to take this seriously. I'm here, for, I'm here to party. You're here to party. <laughs> my name is Sam, and I'll be Simon Kell. Oh, God. All right, peeps. This was an awkward ending. Um, anyway, tune into Maze Treatments next, uh, next Wednesday. Uh, June 3rd. June 3rd. Uh, I think we're going to be releasing it at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So definitely tune into that and uh, check out the debut episode. And uh, the bracket is up. So I would love to hear who you guys think are going to take it all the way to the finals, man. So, the real winner is going to be the audience. Exactly. Um, so definitely stay tuned so we can do this, man. It's going to be fun. So if you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification beware every time we put up a new video. Follow us on Instagram at The Knights of Horror and Twitter on what, Sammy? The Knights of Wait, you, nope, Instagram you is The up. Knights, of, Knights of Horror. Damn it. No. I, was, it wait, I, was, I was going through this in my head. It, was, it only <laughs> takes me a second. <laughs> of course we have a merch store as well if you guys are feeling a little extra like you want to support the um the channel buy some of our merch it's up it's definitely up also representing tormented society today shout out to those guys um with that being said y'all stay classy now